No, when I get nervous, I tell the truth. Um, but outside of that, outside of that, you know, we got to keep showing up. And forget the Grammys for a second, just in life. As, I, as my daughter sits and stares at me nervous as I am. Beyonce is allegedly running and hiding with the kids after Diddy's lawsuits continue to mount and her time is limited. Because many people are saying that her husband, Jay-Z, is next. So Queen Bey gave Jay the impression she was going to be there for him through thick and thin after surviving multiple affairs. But she had to call it quits as Jay is allegedly facing prison time after his alleged involvement with his best friend Diddy in trafficking. Blue Ivy, the daughter of Jay-Z and Beyonce, is stirring up quite a commotion. She has just exposed Jay-Z for cheating on Beyonce and his involvement in an affair with none other than Diddy. Before delving into the enticing particulars, let's first establish the backdrop. Jay-Z and Beyonce have carved out a legendary path in the music realm, shrouding their personal lives in secrecy. Yet, amidst their veiled existence, emerges their daughter, Blue Ivy, whose burgeoning presence is now causing quite a stir. Um, just in life, you gotta keep showing up. Just keep showing up. Forget the Grammys, you gotta keep showing up. Until, you, until they give you all those accolades you feel you deserve. Did you notice how confused Blue looked there? Well, according to recent accounts, there's a buzz about Blue Ivy uncovering a whisper about her dad's supposed fling with Diddy. How did she stumble upon this revelation? At the tender age of 12, Blue Ivy is showing her sleuthing skills. She stumbled upon a string of cryptic texts on her father's phone, hinting at a clandestine bond between Jay-Z and Diddy, both titans in the music realm. Blue Ivy was astonished at what she saw. Being the sharp-witted young girl she is, she resolves to intervene. Armed with newfound information, she initiated a covert operation to collect evidence. She enlisted her trusted friends and fellow celebrity offspring, and together they established a clandestine detective society committed to unveiling the secrets of their parents' lives. Blue Ivy's investigative prowess became the focal point as she unearthed a trail of clues hinting at a rumored affair between Jay-Z and Diddy. Here is one of those clues. I love New York! Who gon' respect this hustle? Now what you know about that? The evidence amassed by Blue Ivy and her detective club was truly astonishing. They skillfully intercepted clandestine phone conversations, snapped incriminating photos, and even documented compromising dialogues. With each piece of evidence, the mounting weight threatened to unveil Jay-Z's hidden life to the world. Equipped with irrefutable proof, Blue Ivy resolved it was time for a confrontational climax. In a dramatic showdown, she confronted her father, presenting him with undeniable evidence of his rumored affair with Diddy. The atmosphere crackled with tension as Blue Ivy pressed her father for answers, compelling him to confront the truth head on. The aftermath of her confrontation reverberated throughout the music industry, stirring up speculation among fans and media outlets alike. Will Jay-Z finally come clean about the alleged affair? And how will Beyonce respond to this seismic revelation? Only time will tell. But Jay-Z found himself torn between admitting to or refuting the accusations, realizing the weight of the moment upon their relationship. The heaviness of his daughter's disillusionment and the looming repercussions of the disclosure saturated the atmosphere. The aftermath of Blue Ivy's confrontation rippled not only within the Carter residence, but also reverberated throughout the music realm. Speculations ignited like wildfire, and fans eagerly anticipated a reaction from Jay-Z and Beyonce. The couple withdrew from public scrutiny, igniting further conjecture regarding the status of their bond. The paparazzi relentlessly pursued them, hungry for any hint of a reaction or comment. And so unfolds the intriguing story of a determined young woman seeking the truth, with the looming possibility of consequences that could alter the course of the lives of music's most influential duo. Will Jay-Z and Beyoncé confront these rumors directly? Meanwhile, it appears that Beyoncé has decided to leave Jay-Z after his involvement with Diddy. But the situation is getting worse for Jay-Z. Bay is allegedly separating her assets with Jay to protect her brand after allegedly secretly filing for divorce from him back in June. Bay and Jay knew about Diddy's wrongdoings, so they could be considered accessories to the crime, and some are saying they might be a little more involved with the Colombian dancing powder than we originally thought. Reports suggest that Diddy is pointing fingers at his once buddy Jay-Z, claiming he is the snitch. Wild, right? Who would have thought Jay-Z, of all people, could be pulling the strings behind the shady scenes of the hip-hop world? In the midst of these challenging times, Suge Knight, 
currently incarcerated, has claimed that with Diddy's alleged leverage now under the scrutiny of authorities, numerous individuals will attempt to undermine him, whether directly or indirectly, in order to prevent him from incriminating them. Knight is certainly making waves with his revelation about working on a tell-all documentary chronicling his life. He's promising to unveil every detail, leaving nothing concealed. There's even a tantalizing suggestion that he holds crucial information regarding the accident that left him in a coma. It seems like Diddy might soon find himself confronting some uncomfortable truths as individuals are stepping forward to share their encounters with him. Among them is Tonica Ray, a TV host who once collaborated with Diddy as a backup singer. Ray has come forward with claims of a turbulent experience while working alongside the rapper. She candidly admitted to actively avoiding him, even in the realm of social media. Ray asserted that she was keenly aware of the need to steer clear of Diddy at all costs, even if it meant performing for him. Despite being entrusted with administrative duties, she maintained her distance, implying that the current storm surrounding Diddy pales in comparison to what she personally witnessed. Oh yeah. You know, we all have stories. Seriously, we all have stories. Mine is horrific and only five people know it. And I probably will never tell it, but it's, since then, I've been like, yep. And I also am very intimately aware that you tell your truth and you become victimized over and over and over and over and over and over. And mind you, I then interviewed him many times. Recall the lawsuit where Lil Rod accused Diddy of bragging about dodging firearm charges in a 1999 altercation? Well, the supposed victim has stepped up to clarify the story. Allegedly, it was P. Diddy himself who was behind the New York club shooting back then, not Lil Rod. You might recall the incident. It ended with rapper Shine taking the fall while Combs walked away untouched. The accuser boldly claims Diddy even struck her during the club chaos, but his wealth and influence ensured his freedom while Shine served a decade in prison. Interestingly, Mark Curry, a former artist under Diddy's label, hinted that as soon as Shine was released, Diddy arranged for his deportation, presumably to silence any potential revelations. All right, here's the scoop. Ever since those allegations surfaced, fans have been digging deep into Diddy's history, scrutinizing every detail for hints about the serious accusations. Now, let's turn back the clock a few years to when Diddy and a young Justin Bieber were collaborating on music and enjoying themselves. During that time, there's footage showing Justin spending a solid 48 hours with Diddy. What's really catching everyone's attention is the fact that Diddy actually gifted Justin a car. And remember, Justin was underage at the time. Yeah, so, as soon as you turn 16, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let you rock this every time. Right here? Yeah, like, yeah, this will be yours. So, let me oh, tell you, it's okay. a little dusty, but you know. Go get the first shot at this. Man. Man. We're all familiar with how Hollywood operates, right? Nothing comes for free in that realm. So when Diddy let slip those words, the internet exploded. Where we were and what we were up to, well, that's privileged info, but let's just say it was straight out of a teenager's fantasy. Now things take a darker turn. Some are raising serious doubts about what really went down behind closed doors during those 48 hours. Beyond the reach of cameras, there's this whole speculation floating around suggesting Justin might have been one of Diddy's alleged victims. Just imagine it. Following that encounter, Justin promptly changed course, steering clear of anything associated with Diddy like it was contagious. If hanging out with Diddy truly held the allure he depicted, why the sudden disappearance act? But here's the kicker. Fans couldn't help but notice Diddy's insistence on mentioning his custody of Justin during those 48 hours. Some massive allegations might be coming soon involving Justin Bieber, P. Diddy, and Usher. Usher was discovered when he was 14 years old by P. Diddy. In an interview with Oprah Winfrey in 2012, Usher admitted that Puff Daddy had brought him to sex parties and exposed him to drugs when he signed to the record label. It seemed like he was striving to assert control and authority, preempting any scrutiny of what transpired during that time. And this isn't the first instance of such dynamics. Recall when Usher spent a whole year under Diddy's roof? Similar story. Who knows what could have unfolded during those days? And here's the kicker. Diddy maintained legal custody of Usher until he released his debut album. During an interview with Howard Stern, Diddy made a startling revelation. He admitted that he had the opportunity to witness certain things. This revelation came amidst swirling rumors about Usher, Justin, and their infamous shindigs. However, the situation took a grave turn when lawsuits began emerging left and right. The floodgates truly opened when Cassie Ventura filed a lawsuit against him back in November. In her lawsuit, she made weighty accusations, alleging that he mistreated her in 2018, coerced her into carrying a firearm to intimidate her, and forced her into unwelcome intimate encounters with his male staff. 
Diddy's legal team sprang into action with lightning speed, swiftly tackling the initial lawsuit within a day. But the legal tempest was far from over. Two more lawsuits soon followed, continuing to brew. Yet amidst this storm, none carried the weight of the bombshell dropped by Rodney Jones. This lawsuit stands out for two significant reasons. Firstly, it threatens to illuminate Diddy's enigmatic orientation, and secondly, rumors abound of video evidence capturing Diddy's alleged actions. Hip hop mogul Sean Combs is being accused of conduct by a music producer. A federal lawsuit was filed Monday in Manhattan, and the accusers comes of repeated instances of unsolicited groping while working on an album. The legal claim is one of several assault lawsuits filed against Combs in recent months. Jones claims he endured unwanted advances from Diddy's associates and was coerced into engaging in relations with adult workers hired by Combs. Allegedly under Combs' employment from September 2022 to November 2023, Jones alleges he suffered mistreatment, coercion, and threats during this period. Jones confidently declared his possession of both video and audio proof, implicating Diddy, his staff, and other individuals in grave illegal actions. To intensify the controversy, he also accused Daphne Joy of involvement in these alleged illicit activities. The lawsuits have thus spiraled into a state of utter chaos. Adding to the turmoil, Gene Deal has chimed in, suggesting that Diddy might be working as an informant for the authorities, although such claims seem dubious. Nonetheless, fervent fans speculate that Diddy is facing a significant reckoning, having supposedly outlived his usefulness. Fans are speculating that Diddy might have thrown others under the bus to protect himself. There's chatter about a possible plea deal he might have taken, leaving the higher-ups nervous. Alternatively, it's suggested that he's been cooperating for a while now, and things might have already been resolved. Regardless, all these scenarios point to potential exposure, and it seems like those in power are feeling the heat. Tensions are high, especially with 50 Cent stirring the pot on social media once more. First, he poked fun at Diddy after Homeland Security's unexpected visit, and then he didn't hold back, taking a swipe at Jay-Z. He posted a humorous image resembling a missing person ad with Jay-Z's face, accompanied by a caption asking if anyone had seen Jay-Z, implying that Diddy wasn't picking up his phone. Let's dissect this. Jay-Z and Diddy have been putting on a show of being best buddies for the cameras, but the reality is their relationship has always been a bit shaky, you know? Diddy's been loudly proclaiming that Jay is the only one he's endorsed outside of his mom, but perhaps there's more depth to their connection than meets the eye. There's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean, that's Jay-Z. We call each other Sean. Okay. Yeah, yeah, nobody else could call me Sean. He's you the know? only person who's Sean single, approved. There's not a single person that, that outside should be, of family. That should be, no, outside of my mother. Okay, just that should be. Remember that whole East Coast, West Coast feud that claimed the lives of legends like Biggie and Tupac? Well, Jay-Z and Biggie were tight before all that chaos erupted. They go way back to Eli Whitney High School in Brooklyn, where they hung out and formed a bond that carried over into their rap careers. By the time Jay-Z was gearing up to release his debut album, Reasonable Doubt, Biggie was already a heavyweight in the game. In 1996, Biggie was basking in the success of Ready to Die and gearing up for his second album, Life After Death. Undoubtedly, Jay-Z found himself in Biggie's shadow in many ways during this period. Tensions ran high, especially between Diddy's Bad Boy records and Shug Knight's Death Row records, where Biggie and Tupac were signed, respectively. While Tupac and Biggie were embroiled in their feud, Jay-Z was subtly throwing shade at Tupac. However, given Jay-Z's lesser prominence at the time, it felt like the overall atmosphere was soured by Biggie's actions. Do you catch my drift? Rumor has it that despite the tension between Biggie and Tupac, they didn't necessarily harbor hatred toward each other. However, the same can't be said for Jay-Z. Recently, Irv Gotti spilled some gossip on Fat Joe's Instagram Live show, claiming that Tupac's animosity towards Jay-Z was ignited by the track, Brooklyn's Finest. And me knowing Jay, how I know Jay. Now I'll go back to, listen, listen, listen. <laughs> I was dead set against it. I was telling Jay, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And he was like, why? And I was just like, Big is, he's too strong. I said, but before we take over the world, we gotta take over the West Coast. Before we take over the West Coast, we gotta take over the East Coast. Before we take over the East Coast, we gotta take over New York. Before we take over New York, you gotta take over Brooklyn. And he owns all that. According to Gotti, Tupac felt provoked by the lyrics, leading him to lash out at Jay-Z. The tension escalated, with Tupac expressing disdain for Jay-Z and publicly criticizing him. Tragically, Tupac's life was cut short in a drive-by shooting, prompting accusations aimed at Biggie and raising questions about Jay-Z's whereabouts during the incident. 
Similar suspicions surround Diddy's involvement. After the departure of one of the most prominent figures in the industry, rumors began to swirl. Remember what Keefe D mentioned about Diddy allegedly offering money to orchestrate the hit on Tupac? It's disturbing to contemplate how those two individuals ultimately gained from Tupac's demise. Yet, with Biggie still in the picture, he posed a threat to their dominance. Then, merely six months later, Diddy persuades Biggie to attend an after-party following an awards ceremony. And tragically, Biggie meets a similar fate in another drive-by shooting. As the dust settles, people start noticing suspicious details surrounding Diddy, like his desire to travel in a separate car from Biggie, and the fact that Biggie's vehicle had its tires marked. It makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's truly nauseating to consider how Diddy and Jay-Z managed to evade consequences for their actions, while Jaguar Wright enters the scene, exposing the truth. Even after Biggie's tragic departure, Diddy continues to profit off his verses, capitalizing on his legacy. Diddy has been exploiting Biggie's name for longer than the time Biggie himself spent on this earth. It's often overlooked that he hadn't even reached 25 when he passed away. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse is very valuable. So then what the f happened to the commission? What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out, then the commission was supposed to come out, and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. Jaguar's revelations don't stop there. She unveils another bombshell, disclosing that an album was planned posthumously for Biggie, yet it never materialized. She asserts that Diddy essentially seized control of all of Biggie's unreleased material, using it to construct his entire career. Looking back, it's evident that Jay and Diddy played their cards cunningly, propelling themselves to their current positions. It's intriguing how both Diddy and Jay-Z seem to have had connections to various unfortunate incidents over time, yet somehow, it's all pushed aside. Considering their parallel beginnings in the industry, it's plausible they extended mutual support along their paths. Given their shared circles, they likely possess deeper insights into each other than acknowledged. Speculation arises that their association might have been more about monitoring competition than genuine camaraderie. There are whispers, perhaps unfounded, that Jay-Z might have harbored envy toward Diddy's success prior to the legal entanglements. During a recent interview with a popular hip-hop news outlet, Jaguar dropped a bombshell, claiming that Jay-Z's misdeeds surpassed even those of Diddy. According to her, Jay-Z's expertise in concealing his true nature made it nearly impossible for anyone to see his genuine character. Jaguar contended that Jay had assembled a legion of individuals who would bear the brunt if Jay-Z were ever exposed, contrasting Diddy's tactic of instilling fear to control others. Sean Carter is worse. Uh-oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. Allegedly, Jay took a divergent approach by preemptively fortifying himself against downfall. Over the course of 30 years, he purportedly cultivated a network of allies, strategically sidestepping blame as they faced repercussions. It's plausible that Jay also utilized Diddy as a shield. With all eyes on Diddy, Jay's long-standing association with him remains largely unquestioned. Such maneuvering raises suspicions of shady dealings. Jaguar is unleashing startling revelations, asserting that the casualties of the music industry weren't limited to Tupac and Biggie. She suggests that Jay-Z allegedly sacrificed other individuals to advance his career. According to her, Jay-Z was introduced to the scene by the gifted rapper Big L. However, fate took a cruel turn when Big L met a premature demise. Interestingly, Jaguar claims that she and Big L were romantically involved at the time of his passing, and he purportedly confided in her about Jay-Z's intentions towards him. It appears Jay-Z has an endless well of schemes. Jaguar recently dropped another bomb, alleging Jay had someone target Beanie Siegel's lungs to sabotage his performances. Let me clarify, Beanie was rising to fame at the time, captivating crowds with his performances, unlike Jay-Z, whose stage presence wasn't exactly stellar. Jaguar asserts that Big L cautioned her about Jay's dubious behavior, alleging he had a talent for coveting what belonged to others and leveraging his connections to obtain it. But she didn't stop there. She firmly believes it was Jay-Z who orchestrated the shooting of Beanie Siegel as soon as he returned home. The incident left Siegel's mother in such fear that they had to seek refuge at the TLA. Fast forward to the present, Jay-Z finds himself in the spotlight once again, but for all the wrong reasons. A journalist has stirred controversy by claiming to have been in contact with Jay-Z's alleged mistress before her untimely demise. Was she pregnant by him? She was pregnant enough to know that she was having a boy. 
Jay-Z was with Beyonce, married to Beyonce by then. He did not want any outside children. Remember I said Miss Knowles did not want their mother chilling around, okay? So the thing was, Beyonce might have told him, look, I know you out here, but you better not bring no babies here on me. This ain't fences. You better not bring a baby here talking about I and got a baby. You No. Know. Rumor has it that Beyonce and this other woman were both expecting at the same time leading to unbearable jealousy on Beyonce's part. Liz Crokin caused quite a commotion when she revealed alleged details about Kathy White's death. She claims to have learned about Kathy through her employer, who tasked her with investigating online rumors linking Jay-Z to a woman named Kathy White. This entire scandal first surfaced on Hollywood Street King in an article back in August 2010. Liz diligently tracked down Kathy at her workplace in bustling New York City, eventually connecting with her over the phone. During their conversation, Kathy hinted at the possibility of sharing her story publicly in the days to come. However, when Liz attempted to reach out to Kathy again, her efforts were in vain. It wasn't until she managed to speak to one of Kathy's colleagues that the shocking truth emerged. Kathy had tragically passed away. Initial reports attributed her death to a brain aneurysm, but suspicion loomed as rumors swirled about a possible affair. Speculation intensified after sightings of Kathy and model Claudia Jordan with Jay-Z and Diddy at a Las Vegas nightclub surfaced. So whatever the f Beyonce over there saying to him or doing, like whatever her magic is, is whooping it to the point to where that he knew he had to take care of this situation with Kathy White. She most assuredly was pregnant by him, okay? And her being pregnant by him would have meant a lot to her. It would have been a come up. She pregnant by Sean Corey, and Carter, Beyonce's husband, okay? She was going to have his child. Child would look just like him, honey. Would have been just like him. There's been speculation swirling that Diddy possibly aided Jay-Z in concealing this entire debacle. Rumors are circulating that the autopsy findings were manipulated, though no concrete evidence has surfaced. Since the legal turmoil began, Cassie Ventura, who allegedly rocked Diddy's world with her lawsuit, seems delighted by recent events. In a statement, she expressed satisfaction, stating, We stand by law enforcement's efforts to pursue justice against lawbreakers. Hopefully, this marks the start of holding Mr. Combs accountable for his misconduct. Moreover, Aubrey O'Day, who has been closely associated with Diddy throughout her career, notably as the front woman of Danity Kane formed during the Making the Band Three Inches era, has now stepped into the spotlight. You might remember her presence when Cassie initially filed her lawsuit. O'Day stood in support. This time, she's taken to social media to respond to the investigation against Diddy. She suggests that Diddy is facing the repercussions of his actions, having blindsided numerous artists and allegedly derailing their careers in one swift motion. O'Day also subtly alludes to her own challenging experiences with Diddy, indicating she lacked the courage to speak out about them until now. Over the years, 50 Cent and Diddy have traversed parallel paths in the music scene. However, their bond has hit a rough patch recently. About a month following the eruption of allegations against Diddy, 50 Cent revealed his plans for a documentary shedding light on the alleged mistreatments. He pledged to channel the proceeds towards supporting victims. Yet, when the authorities swooped in, 50 Cent insinuated Diddy's culpability. He remarked, it's not just Diddy who did it, it's Diddy done it. Such statements imply a belief in Diddy's involvement, suggesting that such actions don't typically occur without a compelling case. Former talk show host Meghan McCain weighed in on the recent news about Diddy, suggesting that the interview with Cat Williams might contain crucial information that warrants serious attention. McCain emphasized the importance of listening to every word uttered by Williams. Rapper Uncle Luke also chimed in, alleging that the government is attempting to silence Diddy due to an ongoing federal investigation. He believes this is payback for Diddy's lawsuit against DeLeon, a multi-billion dollar liquor company, for racial discrimination in 2023. According to Uncle Luke, taking on such a powerful corporation with extensive media and high-level connections was inevitably going to lead to repercussions. However, rapper Slim Thug offered a contrasting perspective, expressing his belief that situations like this are profoundly disheartening for the entire African-American community. He finds it troubling to witness fellow African Americans celebrating the downfall of individuals like Diddy. Adding to the complexity, Shug Knight proposed a larger conspiracy theory, suggesting that the recent raids were not solely targeting Diddy, but were orchestrated to conceal incriminating evidence concerning powerful individuals. According to Knight, Diddy may merely be a pawn in a larger scheme aimed at shielding influential figures from scrutiny. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.